Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome, my people. Ahlan wa sahlan. My name is Yaqad Zaman. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Let's change this background. I don't like this background. The background looks a bit too blobby. All right, let's check out. Let's see this one. What's this one like? Okay, that looks a bit too, too serious. Like a news channel. Let's do this one. Uh, back to the normal. All right, so ahlan wa sahlan, guys. Welcome. My name is Yaqat Zaman. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day, enjoying yourselves. Looks a bit yellow. I need to change the setting. All right, that's better. That's less yellow now. Ahla wa sahlan everybody, hope you guys are having a fantastic day, Friday, mashallah, today, had Juma today, delivered a talk on Juma, which was, inshallah, I'll be putting it up on my telegram, it's about Muslims and their responsibilities and values, principles, inshallah. Alright, so welcome, welcome everybody, ahlan wa sahlan, as you can see, bold liakat, bold liakat, look at that bold. The boldness has, uh, has, has coldness has hit my head, so it's been very cold this week. And mashallah, mashallah, the bold head has not really kind of made it any any easier. The barakah of having long hair, guys. That's the barakah of having long hair. <clears throat> Ahlan wa sahla. Yo Simati, wa alaikum as salam, wa alaikum as salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, welcome, mashallah, welcome. I hope you guys are well. Abdul Majid, wa alaikum as salam, my brother Abdul Majid, ahlan wa sahlan. SC1, wa alaikum as salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, ahlan wa sahlan, mashallah. Abdul Majid, Safiya, and me, home waiting for Safura, ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome, Safiya, how are you? Crazy kid. Crazy, <laughs> Chucky. <laughs> yeah, so so it's been a very nice week, guys. Mashallah, back making videos again. <clears throat> As you probably been uh, watching those videos that I put up, and I've actually got new software, so I paid for some new software this week, and there's some more I might be paying for. I'm just thinking about whether I should get it or not. Uh, check out the video, check out the Quduri video and check out the um, Sayyidina Ali, the one of Ali radiallahu anhu. Check that out, see what you guys think of that format, if you guys enjoy it or not, if you like it. And I can play around with it as well. There's actually some new settings I can actually have, like, you know where you have the person where it's like green screen, where there's the image and then the person simply is right in front of it. You can't see any of his background. So there's that as well. Yeah, there's that as well. So inshallah, I'll see. Why is it still a bit yellow? I'm not, I'm not too happy with this lighting. One second, guys, give me a sec. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, that seems a bit better. But it's just a bit yellow. I look like I got jaundice or something. Some illness. All right. I need to a bit higher, a bit higher. Okay, full white now. All right, so Masir Ali, wa alaikum salam, ahla wa sahlan, my brother from America, Kaif, Imran Bada, ahla wa sahlan, ahla wa sahlan, wa alaikum salam. Is it okay to have a warm shower when fasting Ramadan? I remember reading about warm air. Yes, it's totally fine. Totally fine. That's if a person is going to deliberately inhale. Uh, vapor. So if a person puts their mouth around some vapor and inhales it. Uh, Idris, wa alaikum as salam, mashaAllah. Alhamdulillah, I'm very well. Long time, my brother. Long time. Hope you're well. Hope everything's good on your side. Uh, what's the latest, my brother? Anything, anything new on your part of the world? Yeah, so, um, so I've uh, been doing a bit of editing with that new software. So inshallah, I'm going to see how it comes out. See if it's something which is worth investing in more. 
that's the thing about these YouTube channels. You have to always keep up with with the technology. You got to always make good quality videos. Sound, sound, and the video are two important things. Yeah, so that's why I think it's very important for anyone who is interested in starting some social media platform. There's actually a guy I came across. Mashallah, is very good. Those of you guys, uh, so. So let's have a check. All right. So uh, this guy is. Let me find him. Right. Yeah, this is the guy. It's called Learn Arabic with Khashu. Yeah, mashallah is very good videos, you know, very good. So those of you guys who are learning Arabic. Make sure you check it out. Yeah, check it out, mashallah. Subscribe to him. Sound looks very good. Really impressed. Otherwise, I'll see you soon. Ahla wa sahlan, my brother. The Quran lessons are going good. I just need to try to work on my tajweed and add some melody. Also want to start learning how to end the verses. Yeah, inshallah. Once you get near near the end of the where we reached, then inshallah, there you're going to learn about that more. Hayati, ahlan wa sahlan, welcome. Ahlan wa sahlan, what's the latest in in Australia, in the outback? The crazy kangaroo land and the shrimps on the barbie land and the all year round sunny makes us all jealous. Country, how's that going? What part of Hidayah are you guys on? Uh, are you talking about the li the online lessons? Online lessons, we are mid-fasting. Any books that you recommend to me that have deeper ta'aleel than hidayah without being too crazy? Uh, deeper ta'aleel than hidayah? I don't, I mean, the, hidayah is the ta'aleel. So, Salakhsi, maybe if you read Salakhsi, if you interest in that, Bahru Raiq. But hidayah is really ta'aleel. I mean, then if you read the commentaries of hidayah, like Fatul Qadir, or maybe Inaya, something like that. Check it out. Wa alaikum assalam. Ahla wa sahlan, my brother Muhammad. Ahla wa sahlan, welcome. Welcome, welcome. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. What's the latest? What's the latest, brother Muhammad? Safura and Homna. Ahla wa sahlan. Hello, Safura. Hello, how are you? I'm going to do that voice because kids like, for some reason, kids like high, high pitch sounds. They don't like deep voices. Gee, sometimes you don't feel like studying at all, period. Have you ever felt like this? Yes, of course. So many times. This is a normal part of my life. <laughs> normal part of my life, my brother. It's just, you guys don't see that part of my life. You know what? This week I was actually thinking I need to start. Um, I need to start. Uh, what do you call those again? Vlogs again. Yeah, it's daily vlogs or a few days vlogs. And I was thinking about getting this camera. It's actually designed for vlogs. I'm thinking about it. But the thing is, I've got to be consistent with it, isn't it? I'm going to have to force myself to kind of make a vlog. That's the only issue. Yeah, unless you guys are like just interested in boring, mundane stuff. Uh, sometimes uh, I've been... So what I would suggest is if you ever get bored of studying anything, it's fine. You get People get bored of driving cars. People get bored of going on holidays, people get bored of sleeping as well. What you need to do is you need to mix and match. So you need to kind of do other things that will bring that enjoyment back again. Yeah, And one of the best things I've seen about studying is if you sit in the company of people that are more learned than you, it definitely encourages you to because they mention things and you think, wow, okay, I've got to start reading now. And then you start reading and then you start, you know, enjoying all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that's why that's why seeing in the company of learned, like not just like pious people is good, obviously, but with learned people, like people who talk about academic things, very important for students. I've been reading Akta and I'm wondering how it compares to Hidayah. I could be wrong in my thinking, but I feel like I can suffice in this kitab. Uh, possibly, possibly. Yeah, uh, Hidayah is obviously, Sahib Hidayah is known for for his 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 like status, so that's why Hidayah is is a well studied book as opposed to Akta. Akta is good, 
but it doesn't go into that much detailed explanation. See, the thing with Hidayah is, is it depends how you study it. Hidayah is a very deep book. Mulana Shah Kashmir used to say that one of the books, I, I, he said, I could, I could rewrite all the books in the library except for Hidayah. Hidayah is, is, is very, very complex. I want to get a new laptop and was thinking about MacBook M1 2020. Yep, get it. Depends what you want it for. If you want it for editing, then make sure you get a 16 uh, gig RAM. Yeah, 16 gig RAM you have to get. Not 8, don't get 8, get 16. It's going to be worth it. Yeah, definitely be worth it. M1 is fine. I don't think people need M2. Oh, the only people that I would say that probably need the M2 is like people who edit really big videos, 8K videos and stuff like that, that want it like really, really high-end gaming. Otherwise, I've got M1. MashaAllah, it is excellent. More than what I need. Very good at editing speed. Uh, you know, no lagging. Battery is very, very nice. Um, yeah, I think that's that's probably... Wa alaikum as salam, Abu Bakr ahlan wa sahlan. One of my teachers once said, people think becoming a scholar is glamorous, but in reality, it's quite a lonely endeavor. Yeah, honestly, it's the only thing that you, so general public sees a scholar in just his like shining moments. And then they think, wow, look at that, all the people meeting him. He's being invited for this event and this and that. But what they don't see is 99.9% .9 of his life. They don't see that. That's where, obviously, you know, he's got to do all the toiling and hard work and this and that. So I definitely 100% agree with that. It's a good point. Vlog the garden. <laughs> I can vlog. It's a good idea. Maybe make a YouTube ch channel. Liakat's garden. Today in Liakat's garden, we will be looking at the red bush. Tomorrow we'll be looking at <laughs> the thorny, the thorny rose bush. So yeah, I think vlog. At the moment, the garden. I did. I did some gardening last week. Yeah, in the cold, freezing cold, zero degrees, but. I had to take care of the garden because this is the time, guys. You need to prune your garden. The gardens need to be sorted out. This this is the time. Cut cut the the branches, cut them back, and then you have a nice growth in spring. And and you know, you want to also get all the, rid of any sort of like weeds or anything. Now, I have wondered a few uh, times recently what is the purpose of seeking ilm and following madhab if lay people can follow any of them they wish, whereas Others will second guess themselves and whether they doing it correctly or not. So, so the the idea is that scholar that you ask, lay people are supposed to ask scholars, and the scholars they ask are supposed to follow a madhab. That's the idea. Yeah. So it's like a doctor and a GP is like a scholar. So the doctor will follow a particular madhab in how he how he um, how he uh, prescribes particular medicines or you know evaluates the patient. So that's basically the idea. They're supposed to be the scholars are supposed to be the ones that follow the madhab. And then he or she asks the scholars. That's the idea. Yeah. End of the day, it's it's where people who are deliberately trying to cheat and find loopholes and mess around with Allah's deen, that's the people who obviously are going to be questioned, held accountable. Now the average person is just trying to live their life, trying to obey Allah in the best way they can. Then for them, they just ask a scholar. Whatever answer the scholar gives, they follow that. I have a lot of resistance to studying Mutala, but I also love the pursuit of ilm. Wah, kya baat. You got like, Majma'al Bahrain, that is. That's like, Hada adbun furatun wa hada milhun ujaj. Allahu Akbar. Bain, and you're the barzakh bainahuma. Uh, Ahla wa sahla Idris, I would love to see your library. Perhaps you can do a vlog of your library. That would be good. My books are not that many, guys. Um, I don't have many books. Uh, but if you guys are really adamant that you guys need to see my books, then inshallah, I will I will make it done. Uh, inshallah, it will be enlightening and not insanely hard when I study. Inshallah. How much RAM does yours have? 16. Yeah, 16. So I and 16 is needed for the work I do because I have to edit 4K videos. And sometimes the video can be like quite long. So I've experienced it with eight. Eight is not good. Yeah, and I've checked a lot of reviews on this. So, and 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 the reviews for the one that you're going to choose, hopefully, inshallah. Make sure, yeah, make sure it's got, it's got some decent memory as well. 
depends what you want to do again. Again, if you're going to do lots of editing, then you need good memory. Like I've got one terabyte memory. And I really need that. At the moment, I was surprised. Like my memory just got filled up. I was thinking, wow, how is that? So I, I realized some of my videos they were recording and they were like an hour video, something like, I don't know, 50 GB. Wow. Then I had to go and sort that out. Uh, Jeeves is on holiday. I'm not going out in this weather. Garden's frozen. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. But you know what? My brother, I was going to call you actually last week. I was going to call Maji. Maji, come down. Go to help me with some gardening, cutting some bushes and, and branches. Does the scholar have to follow a madhab? Yes, the scholar should follow a madhab. Unless he's like a really, really, really well versed scholar, expert. I've spent some time with a scholar recently and he said that most of love do not know what they want or they want to study 100% true. 159% true, my brother. 159% true. <laughs> this is like proper big time true. It's honest, it's true. It's like in school and college, a lot of people do not know what career they want to go into. And uh, Mufti Faraz actually gave a presentation for us so far this week. Um, and... He mentioned a very good thing. He said, what you need to do is you need to focus on something that you really enjoy. Something you really want to go into. Make that your aim. Make the, like make yourself a goal of what you want to be in 10 years' time. What do you want to be? right? And then work backwards. Work out how you're going to achieve that. So he mentioned uh, what you have to do is you have to, you have to have a vision. He was saying you have to have a vision. Once you have your vision, what you want, you have to have your, uh, you have to break that vision down into how you're gonna, how you're gonna manage it, and then you have to keep at each step. You have to keep on assessing yourself, yeah, checking introspection, and then after that, uh, uh, what was after that? The fourth point that he mentioned. I'll come to me after a while. Yeah, so he's mentioning four points of how how you need to achieve this. Um, so so this is this is basically. This is basically what, what you what you want. Yeah, you want you want to see how how you're gonna achieve this. Right? So how you gonna do what do you want to become? Do you wanna become mufti? But not just a mufti, you wanna become a mufti in a certain area. You wanna become a mufti in Muamalat, you wanna become a mufti in in uh, ibadat, you wanna become a mufti in hajj issues, you wanna become a, a expert in hadith, you wanna become an expert in re regards to hadith related to Bukhari, or hadith related to Muslim, or hadith related to that that's what you have to do yeah that's what you have to do so so it's 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 very it's very problematic with students because a lot of students don't that's one point another problem is that you know students whatever baggage they've come with before that's most likely what they're going to end up with when they when they graduate so if you come with like like a da'wah background most likely when you end you're going to have this da'wah mentality and if you've come with like just a lazy back, just not really bothered, most likely when by the end of it, you're going to be not, not really bothered. So it's like you have to pump yourself up. And, and uh, you know, speaking to a scholar, Mona Hassan Ali, and he was saying, a scholar was saying that some places, what they used to do in India was, if you want to study, you had to do khidma of the ulama for two years. Two years you do khidma, just khidma, khidma, khidma. By then, you kind of understand what you need. And I think that's a very good, Valid point, guys. That's a very valid point. That's something which a lot of people seriously are just confused.com. They do no idea what, what they want to do. So they need to kind of sit in the company of scholars, get used to what it is like listening to, to, to Islamic issues and being with people and seeing their amal. And then after that, you kind of you get that kind of like a coating, you can say. Yeah, rung, and then that kind of rung jargia husband. Yeah, so that rung has now Jared on that guy. So that's, you know what I'm saying? Watch an Istanbul, Majma al Bahrain. I don't want to kind of like, you know, blow my own trumpet, but you know, mashallah, I was impressed. <laughs> I was impressed as well. Many people nowadays go online on Islamic question answer site, watch YouTube videos that's on how we come across when people ask questions. Yeah, and that's slowly what it's going to move towards now is you're going to see this. People are not even going to ask scholars anymore. They're simply going to just ask. ChatGBT or anything that's similar to that, 
and they'll just suffice with that answer. Another cool thing I learned that learning fiqh and acting upon it is a form of suluk. Wah, wah, kya baat. Sufi sahab, faqih wa sufiyun. Fala takun wahida. I got a lot of bo books in my library. MashaAllah. You got the world of books, my brother. How much GB memory? One terabyte. Can you transfer onto hard drive? Yeah, you can have transfer to hard drive. I mean, you can have uh, cloud, clouds as well. You can, you know, purchase cloud, cloud memory. That's also fine as well. But ideally, if you have it on the computer, it's actually faster, very faster. But you can ha have a, a, you know, a solid, solid state drive. Yeah, have a solid state drive. And then you can use that. That's fine as well. Totally. So normally laptops come with that 256. So that's fine. But then just have an extra external drive for that work. What separates those who know why they study or what they want to do and those who don't know? What separates them as in, what do you mean? Do you mean like like the how how they study, how their attitude is, or do you mean as in as in what? Um I mean, if I've understood your question correctly, the people who have a, the people who have a vision, right? Vision-led people, those are the people you can see in their actions. Like they'll get up early in the morning, right? They'll know exactly what they want from the lesson, and if they haven't got that, they'll try their best to get it some other way. That's the vision-led people. It's like imagine a CEO of a company, Steve Jobs, someone like that, Elon Musk, who will literally like kind of. Get up early in the morning, 5 a.m., the 5 a.m. club, guys. And they'll just focus on, you know, knocking out their goals for the day. And otherwise, the other the other camp, they'll just like, oh, did we have a lesson? Oh, okay, mashallah. They don't, we'll have another lesson tomorrow. So they're just like kind of going with the flow. They're on a boat in the ocean. And wherever the water takes them, that's where they're going. Whereas these other guys, they're like, no, we're going to go against the current if we have to. I want to learn how to fly and have a pure heart. Plus, I want to have an understanding of Allah's law. You want to learn how to fly? My brother, you can fly. <laughs> you can learn how to fly. But I think in America, in New York, a Muslim learning how to fly, you know, might not be the best sort of uh, career option for you. Just saying, you know. <laughs> what is a mushtahid muqayyad? I've heard that Mufti Shabir Ahmed and Ibn Athman. Mujtahid Muqayyad basically means someone who's very knowledgeable, but they're restricted to they're restricted to a like a methodology, a school of thought. That's what it means. Do you think it would be permissible to ins ensure the MacBook since they're quite possibly yeah? I, I would say there's there's plausibility there. With Apple Care and that kind of stuff, yeah. Kazmataz, wa alaikum as salam, my brother Kazmataz, welcome. HZ, it's a new name. The hadith about Yajjum every day making a hole in the wall and one day made through. Is it authentic? Yes, it's authentic hadith. Uh, so, but what does it mean though? That's the thing. So, does it mean in your head, do you think of like, you know, the, the tunnel, those uh, Hasidic Jews in New York, you know, like they broke through the tunnel? This is it those or is it basically the wall is basically a group of a community is cut off from another community by a big wall and these guys have slowly been trying to get to the other side and eventually they get to the other side yeah negative scholars are very inspiring during the talks but sometimes we have had negative maktab childhood experiences that have impacted yeah 100 percent. i would agree with you the thing we have to remember is Someone who graduates from a madrasa does not necessarily represent Islam correctly. In fact, I would say a lot of them don't represent Islam correctly. That's a sad reality. When you hear the word Mawlana or Shaykh or Mufti, your mind automatically goes towards someone who obviously is of the highest caliber of action and character and you know all that kind of stuff. But unfortunately, that is not always the case. That's the thing. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a sad. I would say it's like a sad reality of, of, of life, unfortunately. Yeah, may Allah forgive us. Um, the, the, the scholars are supposed to be of the highest caliber, and they should be. They should be striving hard to maintain, even if they're not that, if, they're, if their lifestyle at home behind closed doors is a bit different, and it's not really at that level. Outside, in front of people, they should try to make, they should try to make that the case. Yeah, try to 
it'll look obviously not a nice word, but just try to even fake it if that's the case, just for the sake of upholding the knowledge, the value of Islam and knowledge. Member Al Hilm, alaikum as salam, ahla wa sahla, mashallah, mashallah. I actually put up some Turkish uh, uh, subtitles on my, some of my videos. So, mashallah, my Turkish family out there, I hope you guys are enjoying them. Mufti Sahab, what's your take with regards to the number of Zahir Riwaya? Number of Zahir Riwaya, as in, is there, is there a specific number? I, asked, I haven't understood the question. I asked ChatGPT a question for Hanafis, but it gave me a shaft. <laughs> I think it's because of the answer on the website with the tag Hanafi Fik, but the spelling. Yeah, I've seen that happen before as so. well. Yeah, unfortunately. So at the moment, ChatGBT is still like basically like a, a nursery kid. Yeah, just coming out with all sorts of rubbish. So it's still coming out with un inaccurate answers. But inshallah, inshallah, in already in a few years, ChatGPT is going to be quite good. I have an idea of my goals, but it's not concrete and I don't know if. So you need to write them down, that's the thing. Goals, write them down. Write them down and then draw. You, so Mufti Farah says, you have to quantify your, your goals. Quantify them. Yeah, Make sure that you quantify your goals. It's very, very important. So the way that you quantify the goal is basically you have to write down numbers and figures. What do you want exactly? Thank you so much for doing this, Christian. Uh, no one really does it and means a lot. You're welcome, HZ. You're welcome. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Is working in a high frequency trading company as a software engineer permissible? So it all dip I mean, if the trading company is actually doing trading that's against the, the Sharia, yeah, like for example, doing virtual trading or forward sales, or future sales and things like that, then no. As in as in that job is wrong. But the software itself depends what software they're doing. If they are if they are just simply just doing a generic job, I would say, of the software, like something like an electrician would do or something like a plumber would do, they are simply providing the the IT uh, know-how, yeah, expertise, support. Then there'd be permissibility for that, I would say. Allah Alam. What do you say, Rizwan? I think people give graduates titles too easy. Yeah, 100%. Too easy. They gave me one. <laughs> if I can graduate, then I'm sure most of you can graduate. ChatGPT is musaghar at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Proper big time musaghar. It's like a, at the moment it's like the ism tazghir of kalb. I should make one called chat GPT. Chat GPT R. That's a good one. Goal setting is good for perspective and knowing where you are. The, but one thing I dislike is when self improvement concepts are packages in the garb of deen. And present it as if they are deen. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I agree with that as well. One of the things, one of the things I I heard uh, Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali, I think it was his brother or some cousin or someone. So when Muhammad Ali pa passed away, they were showing like a lot of things about his life, and I think it was his brother or someone that said, he said. If Muhammad Ali was not a boxer, he would definitely have been some some he would have definitely been a champion in something else. Yeah, so he would have definitely been a champion in something else. And I think when I heard that, I think, wow, that is actually a very good statement. Because what that means is the person, it's not the field that they're in that's made them like that. So so it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna become a doctor and you are someone who has this ability to be able to excel then even if you're a doctor you will excel as a doctor and even if you were i don't know taxi driver you'd be a good taxi driver excel in that field you would excel because you have it inside of you that you want to do that that is a very hard thing to replicate that kind of i mean you can become a scholar you can read all the books but if you don't have that thing inside of you that sort of like tawfiq from allah you can say to kind of push you and excel and make you excel and do work like for example dr akram nadwi He's actually completed his Sahih Muslim com uh, commentary. Yeah, 27 volumes, mashallah. So he did that 53 or I don't know how many volumes on the muhaddithat. Yeah, 53 volumes on the history of just compiling about female scholarship, female uh, scholars of hadith. Mind that 53 volumes. Have you ever read a 53 volume book? Think about it. Have you ever seen a 53 volume book? 
And this guy's written that. And then he's written, now it's, it's going to be published in, in, a, in, a, in a year or so. 27 volume commentary of Sahih Muslim. Yeah, so I think that, that these kind of things show you that it's just some people just have this amazing talent inside of them. Yeah, that's a good word, talent. That talent, that gift that Allah has given some people. you got to ask for it. you got to beg for it from Allah. So I think that is something that I, I really want that. I really wish I could have the ability to be able to do a lot of writing and I can do a lot of these things. But it's just something tawfiq. Uh, or part of it. So the point is, I dislike it because they are putting something that may not be Islamic or a concept. Yeah, I think. So I think what's happening now in the world, I think Muslims are in a, in a crisis at the moment. They don't know Islamic culture. They don't know Islamic heritage. So what's happening is they're trying to find things that seem very good on the outside in foreign cultures, and they're trying to adopt them and give them an Islamic touch to it. Right, so you're trying to take the economy and then you take it and then you just shuffle it around a bit and then you kind of give it a little Islamic touch to it. Say Bismillah, Bismillah with it. And then you might want to take, I don't know, university studies, take it, replicate it and then just give it a little Islamic element to it. And then various other things as well that people are trying to replicate. And I think that is the problem that we have. We just, every time someone just says anything which seems remotely close, remotely uh, similar to what Islam says, they just go crazy about it. Whereas in reality, you know, there was a time when Muslims were the the flag bearers of 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 the world in 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 many many fields. What do you guys say about that? Do you guys agree with me? What do you think? Do you guys think that we're just trying to copy too much other people's ideas and just give it our own label? We're not really coming out with anything which is original. Do you think there would be jawaz by insuring MacBook through other than Apple Care? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Because the whole idea. The whole idea is is that if it's something which is going to cause haraj in your mal, that's the issue. Yeah, Apple Care just gave the example of that is because generally they they kind of uh, provide that, don't they? Or they 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 ask if you want it. Uh, do I strive for quality and excellence? Yeah, strive for quality and excellence. That's what we need. People like Muhammad Ali because of his character, he was told he was too stupid to amount to anything because he failed at school quite badly. They think he had dyslexia because he was smart. Otherwise, wow. Ajeeb. Okay, so I'm going to have to check this Turkish Turkish statement. I'm going to have to check what it what it translates. And it's not lurking then in Turkish. Let's see. Let's see. Give, give me a sec. Okay, so just for the benefit of those of you guys who don't know what member Ulhilm said, this is what she says. While giving a Quran lesson in a, a, a mosque, I was away for about two years and I was not reading. Believe me, thanks to you, I started reading the Quran again since that day. I watched Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Okay, so let's translate this into... Let's just flip this around. Alhamdulillah, so happy. I'm so happy that it helps you. May Allah give you success in the Quran. So you imagine this would not be possible in the past at all, guys. All right, check this out. Look at that. Liakat the Turkish at Turkey. If someone wants to thoroughly cover only one fikmat and others beside others by side, which one would you recommend? Hidayah. Definitely recommend Hidayah. That's very good. Yeah. And with Hidayah, then you gotta read something like on the side. I would definitely encourage you to read uh, Fatul Qadir. Yeah, definitely. 
it depends what you want in it. Do you want tafakkuh from it? Do you want like uh, understand tafriyat things? So I would say read Fatul Qadir, Badai Sanai with it, and Sharhul Nashirun Nisharwiqaya. Something like Siaya if you can, but Siaya doesn't cover everything in it. Okay, so Fatul Qadir. Bahra Raik and uh, maybe depends if it's if it's Salat, mu, uh, you know, uh, Halbat al Mujalli, maybe that. Yeah, the ones that I usually go for is when I go for Hidayah, I definitely go for Bahra Raik, uh, Fatul Qadir, Rad al Muhtar. Yeah, really, I, I really find very Salaksiya. Sometimes I go for him as well. What do you? What would you say, Rizwan? A lot of Muslims don't know what Islam is. Their ideas are so vague; they get confused between what's Islam and what they have values that are similar to Islam. Exactly, bang on, bang on, my bro. Mahboob Ahmad, alaikum assalam. Ahla wa sahlan. When talking to one's wife, what is the best way to address the topic of Hulul Ain in Jannah? Just say, bro, this is what Allah has promised us. Inshallah, make dua become shaheed. <laughs> so I get loads. What do you say, bro? What's your what's your tactic? Paint it with the brush of Islam and force concept on viewers, listeners. The worst is when scholars do it. Yeah, I agree. I've had this thought before. Do you think there's an element of postcode lottery when seeking ilm? Right? If someone lives in a community with more... Generally, and unfortunately, that is the case. If you're born in a family that of scholars, most likely you'd have a big advantage. And if you're in a community where there's lots of scholars, you're going to have a big advantage. If you're in a community... It's like, for example, those who lived in Medina in the time of Sahaba clearly had a big advantage of those from those living in in uh, other villages. So this is something which is natural. Yeah, you'll get this. That's why it's it would be very very important for a person to try if they really want to study. You know, try to be in contact. If you can't live near there, at least online nowadays. That's that's a possibility as well. They have more opportunity to seek ilm and good company, whereas others do not have the exactly. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that. Uh, and that's that's like that's like the qadr of Allah, isn't it? fadlullahi yu'tihi man yasha. That's the virtue of Allah. He gives it to whoever He wants. So, but you, we still carry on striving for that virtue. And there's many people who have learnt knowledge without a doubt uh, from remote places. Sayyid al-Saghir is part of al mabsut or not? Yet, yeah. oh, you mean the books, the Zahir Raya books? I thought you meant the number of Zahir Raya masalas. I was thinking. Let me come across. Someone mentioned the number of Zahiri Wai Muslims. Yeah, I've spoken to a few people on this, and a lot of them have said Siru Sagir seems to be just basically Siru is from the the Asal, the Mabsut. Yeah. Hidaya is Sharh level, right? Matan. Yeah, Matan. Matan, then Quduri, isn't it? Quduri would be. I mean, Wiqaya, yeah. So, wiqaya would be taju sharia as wiqaya. That would be good. Kanz is good. Kanz is good. But the benefit of kuduri is because it's one of the most mu'tamad matans. That's the thing. Hola, her hermanos. I don't know anything else after that. Unos, dos, tres, cuatro. That's all. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to learn Spanish, guys. I want to learn Spanish so I can make videos in Spanish. That's one of my... Aim, but I haven't made a plan for that. I want to understand the madhab and the qawaid of each bab. I know qawaid might be anything. However, what do you recommend I read? Uh, if you want qawaid, then there are there are like books that are written on qawaid, isn't it? Like if you want qawaid, obviously of like the ma'amalat, then you got majalla. Majalla is good. Yeah, ashbah and nadair is obviously good. Focus. I would say, you know, when you're learning fiqh, just carry on finishing the books. Make it your mission to finish finish books on your on your own. That will open up lots of doors for you. Honestly, uh, make sure you finish the whole of Hanifi Fiqh several times. Like I, I, I'll let me let you in a little secret. Yeah, I've been since when I went to Umrah. I thought to myself, you know, I've got to listen to the entire Bukhari. So what I did was I downloaded onto my phone the audio of Bukhari. And just when I was there, traveling and Makkah and Medina, I've been listening to the whole of Sahih Bukhari, probably finished it now about three times. So the benefit of that for me is, 
is that the more I listen to it, the more things come to my mind about the hadith, just the hadith itself. Never mind the sharh. So now I, I want to become so so familiar with Sahih Bukhari that if someone says a hadith, I know if it's in Sahih Bukhari or not. And I'll, I'll kind of like have a very good sort of like understanding of how Imam Bukhari brought the hadith. Yeah, and then after I've, I'm really comfortable with Bukhari, I want to move on to something like Abu Dawood. Um, and maybe, um, yeah, Abu Dawood I was thinking next. Maybe Tirmidhi, Tirmidhi, I'm teaching Tirmidhi, so maybe Tirmidhi will be good. But this is the Bukhari, which is the Tajrid al-Sarih. Yeah, Tajrid al-Sarih by Zabidi, that one. Do you think beginners would benefit from Hidayah? I mean, total beginners who have done Sayyidul Ila, say they can... They can benefit, but they won't really grasp the layers. You need the layers before that. Like the discussions you need to have in Quduri, they're very important. Like each masala, you should know what each masala is saying and why they're bringing each masala. And then you bring in Hidayah. Now, if the teacher in Hidayah can do that, then maybe you can you can skip Quduri. Okay. It's possible, I would say, Muhammad, possible. But again, you know, it's like, it's one of those kind of things and it's like, Hit and miss, maybe maybe you'll get it, maybe you won't. But it doesn't matter. Even if you do go into Hidayah and you don't get all of it, you get like 60% of it, 70% of it. Yeah, so read it again. Read another book. Make it up some other way. Wa alaikum as TMZ. Ahamwa Hope you're well. Very good. Thank you very much. Could you give us an overview of the specialism within Islam tradition and which lands specialize in them? Uh, I don't have time. I'm going to have to go for Maghrib now. It's Maghrib time. But ask me tomorrow, inshallah. Yeah, ask me tomorrow. Uh, Kanz and Quduri are the best. Quduri contains the heart of the Madhab. Kanz is the coolest. The Mufti Dora the Explorer. <laughs> in Arabic. Yeah, in Arabic. It's also important to have a righteous teacher for Quduri. That's it, bro. You need to have proper Tahajjud Guzar teacher. <laughs> Aspirant. Wa alaikum as salam. Ahla wa sahlan. Wa alaikum as salam, a habibi, fresh prince. Ha wa sahlan, ha wa sahlan, nilofar wa alaikum as salam. All right, guys, I'm going to finish it there. Maghrib time. So I will see you guys tomorrow, inshallah. Make sure you guys tune in. Tomorrow is Maghrib. And I might be a bit late tomorrow because there's a radio show and I'm going to be uh, on there supporting uh, Sufa's winter appeal. Yeah, so inshallah, I will be, but I will be maybe a bit late, inshallah. All right, guys, so take care, inshallah. Uh, Asr time is ending soon. The Muslims, I mean, may Allah bless all of you guys. May Allah forgive all of our sins. May Allah make us people he's proud of. May Allah enter us into Jannah without any hisab. May Allah give us knowledge uh, that which is pleasing to him. Save us from that knowledge which is displeasing to him. May Allah save our, guard our gazes. May Allah guard our hearts from that which spoils the heart. May Allah enter us into the graves um, and save us from the adab of the, the torment of the grave. And may Allah save us from the fitness of this dunya and the trials that make us further away from Him. And may Allah make us people that bring people closer to Allah. And may Allah forgive us for any mistakes that we have made and any things that we've said that has have hurt people. And may Allah save the Ummah from the five Jahannam. May Allah put them into Jannah Firdaus. May Allah help the people of Gaza. May Allah give them victory over the, of the oppressors. May Allah save the Muslims of the world from the fitna of the jal and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us Muslim leaders who have a backbone, who have courage, who have iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and save them from hypocrisy and nifaq and protect the haramain and masjid al-aqsa. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Alright guys, take care inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.